All right. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning to all. How's everyone doing? Hope all of you have been uh, taken your breakfast already. <laughs> all right. So for today, our program schedule, let's see. Okay, for today, since today is Wednesday, so our first session will be the workshop for Make Your Own Tempe. And then on the second session, we will have a virtual tour, uh, Patin Fishery and Asam Rong uh, from UMP. So without further ado, before I invite the first speaker, which is uh, Dr. Dinar Minrati Fardani, I would like to share a stuff her simple CV first. Okay, so for our speaker for today, which uh, normally we call her here, Budina, or in Malaysia terms, normally you call your lecturers, Dr. Dina. So she is uh, currently, uh, she's not currently working at the Department of Biological Protection Science, but uh, her uh, PhD, previously is from Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology. And uh, one of her most recent publication is uh, on leguminodulation acromobacter xylososidens, as well as for her personal information, her education started in Gajah Mada for her degree and then continued as well in uh, Gajah Mada for her master and PhD in Tokyo University. So if any one of you wants to ask about Japan, you can actually ask Dr. Dina. And for her working experience previously as assistant editor at Indonesian Journal of Biotechnology. So she has quite an experience in uh, publications, something like that, okay? So her uh, research in her PhD uh, previously was on hot water spray over a strawberry plants effectively controls the occurrence of strawberry powdery mildew in ever bearing strawberry production. So anyone here who actually likes strawberry that much could ask a lot of things regarding strawberries to Dr. Dina. All right. Okay. So without further ado, I would like to invite Dr. Dina to give her lecture for today. The time is yours. Okay, thank you, Ms. Sarfina. Good, yeah. Thank you very much for the time. Uh, I will direct it to share my screen. Okay. So, okay. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello everyone, good morning student and all participants for today's session. Um, today, uh, I would like to share about one of traditional fermented food origin from Indonesia. Its name, uh, the name is tempe and also uh, we, we will talk about the short story of tempe and of course uh, how to make uh, how to make tempe. It is uh, maybe uh, very simple, but yeah, very challenging for everyone to work with this kind of uh, work. Okay, tanpa berpanjang-panjang lagi, let's start our talk about tempe. Okay, first, I would like to talk about the definition of fermentation. This is the, uh, the definition is from Encyclopedia of Analytical Science. Uh, the fermentation set itself, it's a chemical process by which, of, uh, by which molecules, molecules such as glucose are broken down anaerobically 
And uh, the anaerobic way of life has attained a wider meaning in biotransformations, resulting in a wide variety of fermented foods and beverages. Fermentation is defined as a chemical chain change brought uh, about using microorganisms, e.g. in the biotechnology industry for production of pharmaceuticals, with food additives and animal feed stuffs. The fermentation process is uncontrolled natural fermentation with defined starter cultures that will provide something new with wherever taste, consistency, and will contain nutritional properties. This product achieved through the combined effect of microbial assimilation and metabolism from enzyme activities derived from food ingredients. So usually, uh, the material should be something starchy from root crops, cereals, pools, vegetables, nuts and fruits, as well as animal products such as meat, fish, seafood, and also dairy products. In Asia, including Southeast Asia, is noted for its much wider utilizations of fungi in food fermentation, especially in solid state, than in the case in Western countries that they usually use the liquid state fermentation. In Indonesia, there are uh, many fermented food products uh, spread around all around Indonesia. From Sumatra, there are tuak, terasi, dadi, tempoyak. Maybe you are familiar with this, tempoyak. And from uh, Java, there are tempe, tauco, oncong, tape, terasi, also dowol, brem. And uh, in East Java, there are petis, peda. And from Kalimantan, there is mandai. Mandai is fermented food product from skin of buah cempedak. I don't know. Uh, then it's cempedak. Okay, cempedak. <laughs> And in Bali, there is also the fermented Uh, food, there are liquid brem, so urutan. Okay, tempe. Tempe is a fermented food made of mainly soybeans and is a nutritious, affordable, and sustainable functional source of protein. And tempe, uh, the soybean cake, that one of uh, comfort food of the almost people in Indonesia. Uh, tempe is one of first style food that you can do anything to, to tempe. You can fry, you can boil, you can make a chip, you can make, uh, make tempe spicy, you can make sweet, sweet and sour, even you can make burger from tempe. So the tempe itself is a natural product that uh, made from soya beans, soybeans, and other uh, bean, other seeds that are dehydrated, cooked, and inoculated with rhizopus STP molds without the, the, without the addition of salt and other ingredients. The mold of rhizopus will grow uh, with kernels into a solid cake covered by a mat of white mycelium and its surface uh, without yellow spot or evidence of uh, black sporulation that, uh, uh, that uh, sp uh, black sporulation, uh, it means that it contaminate, con contaminated, contaminated. Okay, let's talk about the history of tempeh. The origin of USAR tempeh inoculum The question of uh, where tempe inoculum of or usar came from was raised by Vidakdo in an article about how to make tempe in Majalah Guru Desa, the village teacher magazine published in 1915. 
None of the many user producers to whom he asked knew of its origin, but all agreed that it had been handed down for many generations. And the raw materials for USAR preparation are black soya beans and leaves of uh, hibiscus tiliaceus, uh, daun waru. I don't know, in, in Malaysia, daun waru is it uh, exist or not? Daun waru. Waru, waru, uh, waru is uh, uh, like this, like uh, bentuk hati, waru. Yeah, daun waru. Yeah. Uh, almost 100 years after Widakto has had speculated on the origins of Yusar, Ogawa et al. at 2004 noted that uh, Rhizopus orize was commonly present on fresh leaves of hibiscus tilaceus. This led to the suggestion that the uh, suggest, suggestion that the origin of usar and tempe lay in the in the accidental discovery that cooked soya beans kernels wrapped in hibiscus leaves became a solid mass that could be utilized in a variety of ways. And this is the uh, relationship between Japanese and tempe. Um, the earliest reference of tempe was found in Seracentini. Seracentini. This is the manuscript that uh, was written in the around 1,600 and published in 1815 under the supervision of King Pakubuono V of Surakarta Kingdom. Central uh, Central Java, and the fact that the tempe was first mentioned in the Seracentini was first discovered in 1984 by Shaft Shaft and Aoyagi. Uh, the manuscript includes a description of the journey of Mas Cebolang when he traveled between Prambanan Temple and Pajang via Tembayat in the Klaten sub-district of Central Java province. Here, Jebolang was served a lunch and described in its entirety that included a dish of tempeh in coconut milk and tempeh sauce made from over-fermented tempeh. At that time, tempeh made from soya beans was on ordinary, ordinary food found only in rural areas, but tempeh is currently popular found everywhere, not only in rural areas, but also in the cities. Uh, but su surprisingly, Raffes at uh, 1,800 makes no mention about tempe. The hypothesis of tempe originated in Java is supported by the fact that tempe can be found in every corner of the island, with the variation only in terms of the type of substrates used uh, to manufacture it. The production and consumption of tempeh are integral to this Japanese lifestyle, and the bond between tempeh and the Japanese is so strong that the two have become inseparable. Wherever there are Japanese, there is sure to be a source of tempeh too. And um, currently, the spread uh, began with the migration of the Jap Japanese to other regions both within Indonesia as well as abroad. <clears throat> um, so the trade links between Java and the other um, country made the tempe have existed over several hundreds of years. So as a result, tempe manufacture can now be found in Malaysia, Thailand, Suriname, and also Netherlands, and more recently has been taken up in many Western countries, including the United States, Japan, Australia, and Europe. In Indonesia, tempe is one of the cheapest source of protein. In Indonesia, for the same amount of protein content, uh, traditional tempe can be cheaper than beef, chicken, chicken and egg and also milk. 
for tem uh, tempe with hygienic tempe with usually sold in the supermarket it's usually uh, higher the price is higher in the supermarket than in uh, traditional um, market based on research in the united states the commercial tempe uh, in every 84 gram were all high in protein high in energy energy content and high in fiber high in fiber and also low in saturated fat and also mostly free of sugar and almost all were very low in sodium also yeah if we uh, compare with beef, the nutritional content of tempe maybe, yeah, uh, in Jap Jap Japanese is naka naka, naka naka is mirip-mirip uh, gitu. Beda tipis lah antara tempe dan juga uh, beef. And there is literature which give evidence uh, on the potential health benefits of tempe on gut health, mm, cancer and cognitive function, lung health, also cardiovascular health, anemia, liver health, bone health, and type 2 diabetes uh, mellitus, obesity, skeletal muscle recovery, and also most of the health benefits were linked to the isoflavone, protein, mineral, as well as para and probiotic contents in tempe. So you can uh, you can find the literature about the review of this through the you can googling with the keyword tempe and you can find the new literature literature review about uh, tempe. Mm. Well, uh, the microbiology of tempe fermentation, the traditional tempe make uh, the traditional make tempe making process involves two fermentation. Uh, first, in initial lactic acid uh, bacterial fermentation during the soaking and the, of the beans. And the second uh, second process is uh, the subsequent mold, form, mold fermentation when the cooked beans are bound into a solid cake. Therefore, uh, tempe mold, Rhizopus microsporus, Rhizopus orizae, Rhizopus tolanifer, and Rhizopus arizus. So, and the strains used in commercial tempe manufacturing are normally strains of uh, Rhizopus microsporus uh, variant oligosporus. Uh, this is uh, very similar with um, natto in Japan. So if tempe use fungi, use Rhizopus oligosporus, but natto use bacteria, Bacillus natto with um, the nutritional content with maybe similar between tempe and natto because uh, the uh, the base the substrate is same uh, soybean this is the production of tempe the production of tempe this uh, here is in uh, including soaking Dehulling, washing, boiling, draining, cooling, inoculating, and the last one is incubating. The traditional tempe production methods is uh, very greatly. There are at least eight var uh, variations of how and in which order these main steps are conducted, including some repetition of the same steps. The soaking step is uh, usually conducted uh, conducted first. This step is lasting for six to twenty four hours. The soaking uh, soaking step is it, it will hydrate the soybeans and can make the hulls easier to peel. However, some production methods conduct dry dehulling with the machine during. 
natural acidification can happen. So maybe the pH, pH can reach until 4.85, and which can help to inhibit the growth of pathogens and or the contamination from other micro, microorganisms. And the, uh, the next step is the hulling. The hulling is an important step because the presence of soybean hulls in Finnish tempeh is considered as contaminant. Although the dehulling step was historically done by hands or feet in a traditional way, these methods have been eliminated in a hygienic uh, tempeh production system and replaced with uh, mechanical dehulling. So this is the machine of uh, dehulling. So uh, now there are no people that make uh, tempe with feet or hand. It's very tiring. And the next step is boiling. Boiling step, which usually lasts for 15 until 30 minutes in, uh, in tempe production. This, uh, uh, this, also, this step was also uh, critical because it should remove the raw flavor through cooking, through cooking, it's uh, pathogens and spoilage microorganisms that can pose a food safety hazard and also interfere with the fermentation process. Uh, the next step is draining step. This step, um, which might also include a drying process, this step will reduce the water content in tempeh, as tempeh fermentation requires an optimum level of uh, approximately 62% humidity, humidity. And the inoculation, uh, the inoculation step after draining and cooling involves the dispersion of rhizopus SPP, sporangiospores, usually um, around 10 to uh, 100,000 CFU per gram substrate that grow into a dense mycelium biomass that can be harvested before it sporulates. This would be accommodated by packing the soybeans into the containers with limited air, uh, airflow. For example, a banana leaf or a perforated plastic bag um, then the incubating step, it's usually at 25 or 28 degrees Celsius for uh, 18 to 72 hours or yeah, until three days. This will facilitate the growth of Rhizopus SPP that can increase the health promoting potential of soybeans by enhancing nutrient bioavailability and eliminating anti-nutrients, anti-nutrients. And then the harvested tempeh can be sold, cooked, and consumed fresh or after being pasteurized. It can be dried or also frozen. The shelf life of fresh tempeh is approximately three days at, at ambient temperature. And uh, you can also refrigerate or freeze the tempeh and pack uh, as the in the vacuum packaging. It can extend the shelf life of fresh tempeh until uh, months, several months. And this is the stage of tempeh fermentation. Um, you can see here that the uh, tempeh fermentation uh, at 13, uh, 32, 32 degrees Celsius underwent an active growing phase in the first two, uh, 30 to 32 hours, indicate with the mycelial growth, uh, activities of lipase and protease, and also uh, the maturing phase until 48 
at 46 hours indicate with alkalizations, optimum tenderness at 40, 46 uh, hours. And also uh, the highest organoleptic, organoleptic scores is around uh, is around after uh, three days incubation. And then uh, the aging phase until 72, 72 hours indicated by the start of mycelial, mycelial senescence and retain or deteriorated Organoleptics, uh, organolept, organoleptic spores. So the stage of tempe fermentation can result in color change due to the death phase of Rhizopus spp and oxidized unsaturated fatty acids. The overall fermentation of tempe, usually after 72 hours, can gradually promote the production of bitter testing of, of umami testing uh, of uh, umami testing compounds of the tempe. This is the tempe packaging. Usually we use a banana leaf or a plastic bag. Or, uh, the banana leaves is the most uh, common packaging material used by tempe producers. And yeah, the fiber in banana leaves allow the leaf to be moderately accessible such that it can be folded but not easily torn when it, uh, it is wilt. And the leaves are commonly used as a packaging material for tempe. There, is, uh, there are form of variety of banana ref referred to as a klutuk, as its leaves are less stiff and then those of some other varieties and are therefore easily fought uh, to make packets. Banana leaves also allows even air dilution to the fermenting tempe and uh, produce a high quality product. But if you are in the big city, maybe you can find the banana leaf easily, you can use uh, Plastic bag. It's the products. This is the tempe in Indonesia. You can find it in uh, maybe traditional market in Indonesia. Very cheap one. Usually, maybe uh, one one ringgit. You can uh, get ten. Uh, pieces of this tempe for this kind of tempe maybe two ringgit maybe and this is the this is the figure of tempe so last uh, last week last week we you, we made tempe from green bean this is from green bean and this is from soybean uh, this sorry this is green bean this is from soybean. So we can see the texture, the tempeh here. So the, temp, uh, the texture of tempeh should be compact like this and not easily disintegrated upon cutting with knife. So if you cut with knife, it will, it will still stiff. And the color of tempeh should be white like this, so be white due to the growth of the mycelium of Rhizopus spp. Then the flavor of tempe should be meaty, mushroom-like, and nutty. And the odor of tempe should be fresh and without any odor of ammonia. Tempe should be typically from foreign matter such as other beans, hash, and small stones. <clears throat> this is the standard of tempe. So in Indonesia, tempe has been standardized by the National Standardization Agency of Indonesia atau Badan Standardisasi Nasional. So from WHO also have a codex to standard standardize the tempe. 
Okay, like I, uh, I like I uh, like I explained before that you can make any kind of tempe instead of soybean. So you can make other tempe with uh, with other kind of bean. Uh, this um this uh, are many type of tempe in Indonesia. You can make uh from you can make tempe from kacang merah, from kecipir. Kecipir, lam toro. This is green bean, but uh, in this green bean, maybe they didn't uh, clean the husk. They didn't clean the skin, so uh, the kulitnya man. Kemudian ada tempe menjes, tempe bongkre, tempe bungkil. Tempe korobengu, tempe lupin, tempe karet. So uh, with mix substrate like this, uh, we can substitute soybean with any kind of available, available substrate that uh, available in your place. So this also can uh, elevate the protein value of the tempe itself. So this is just just. Uh, short story when i'm in japan i'm making the tempe with the uh, limited uh, limited source limited source uh, so if you want to make you have you have to uh, you uh, you have to have you can uh, prepare the stock pot shallow tray and deep tray for draining and soaking, and this this wood stick, yeah, because um, the hulling, the hulling, the the soybean is very tiring and very yeah, very challenging. If if we we can we make the uh, soybean in uh, big quantities, ini dah aja ini pakai. Pakai wood stick, so we uh, use it for the hulling the uh, the soybean. So because the uh, for packaging we use top bag, and also the most important is tempe starter. This is ragi tempe. So uh, this is uh, the inoculum that you should use for make tempe. And this is the non soybean tempe production. So, uh, for um, the, you will find uh, if you want, sorry, if you want to make the other, uh, the other source, the other substrate instead of uh, soybean, you have to um, mempersiapkan uh, beannya. Itu beda. Jadi, uh, you have to know the characteristic, the characteristic of the bean. So, um, and make the uh, uh, harus diperlakukan sedemikian rupa sebelum di sebelum dibuat menjadi tempe. Karena uh, di Bin kan berbeda-beda ya. Jadi untuk, uh, for example, here's black bean, or black bean, or black bean, green bean, uh, with the hard uh, skin, you can pour hot uh, pour with the hot water first to removing seed membrane, then uh, dip on the water overnight, then uh, continue to next step like uh, um, ordinary step of uh, tempe tempe making, and this is the um, uh, when I'm in Japan, I have a friend in a different lab, 
that have the facility. So we made a small project to see how the spore of Rhizopus bind beautifully the soybean under the scanning electron microscope. This is uh, this is the uh, <clears throat> this is the soybean and this is the spore. You can see here how the uh, spore of the Rhizopus bind the mycelia find the soybean here, this one. Okay, this is the last of my presentation. Maybe after this, uh, we can, uh, we will see the video or how to make tempe. The video, uh, the video will, we will play by Miss Sarvina. Okay. Maybe, Maybe after that, we can have a fruitful discussion about this. Okay. So may I share the screen, Doctor? Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, everyone see? Could everyone see this one? Okay. To show you how to Hello guys! In this video, I want to show you how to make tempe from soybeans and green beans. The ingredients we need are green bean seeds, soybean seeds, toothpicks, and tempe yeast. The first step that must be done is to boil the soybeans and green beans for about 15 minutes. After that, separate the floating green beans and rinse with clean water. After cleaning from dirt, the beans are soaked overnight, and this step also applies to soybeans. Second, boil the beans again for 30 minutes until the outer skin peels off. Then the beans are washed until clean from the skin. Boil the beans again for 15 minutes to make the beans texture softer. After that, drain the beans from the water and let them come to room temperature. The beans are sprinkled with tempeh yeast later. Then stir until evenly mixed. The beans are ready, wrapped in leaves and glued together using toothpick. At last, soybeans and green beans that have been mixed with yeast are incubated at room temperature for 48 hours. And this is the following result of 10 pe incubation after 48 hours. Thanks for watching! All right. Okay, so back to you, Dr. Dina.
Okay, that's all my presentation and also the video. Um, thank you. Uh, the, vid the video was made by our student, Gradia and Rivka. And thank you very much for the video. And uh, I hope the explanation of the presentation of uh, Tempe, after this we can, um, we can get the fruitful discussion based on that. Maybe time will be back to Miss Vina. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Dina. So how's everyone? Uh, okay, so that is how you make tempeh, right? So for those of you who haven't tried, maybe uh, this time you may try to make one at, uh, at home, right? Who knows it become like a bio entrepreneurship thing that you may try in Indonesia as well as in Malaysia, something like that. So maybe you can use other soybeans, uh, other than soybeans, you can experiment and who knows, you can get a uh, uh, good tempeh, right? With good flavors and everything. So, okay, uh, the lecture from the first, Dinner is already finished. So may we move on to the discussion session? So to all dear students who have any questions, may uh, jot down in the chat box or directly can raise hand and unmute your mic to ask Dr. Dina regarding Tempe. Okay, so anyone who wants to ask here? Yeah? This should be an interactive session, right? So I want the students to try and ask directly to Dr. Dina, maybe, yeah? Anyone from uh, UNISA or UMP may have any questions? Or every one of you are sleeping right now. <laughs> All right. Okay, does no one have any questions before this? So uh, Dr. Dina herself, uh, previously when she was in Japan, she actually become this bio entrepreneur. <laughs> she actually sell those tempeh because it's, it's not easy to get tempeh in Japan uh, directly from superstore. Uh, from supermarkets, right? So normally Indonesian will make this tempeh and then sell it overseas, something like that. So any one of you wants to ask any questions to Dr. Dina? Come on, let's see some faces here. All right, from Effie FIFA. Hello, doctor. What is the difference between the making of tempeh compared to natto? All right. Okay, thank you very much for the yeah, question. Uh, the difference between the making of tempeh compared to natto uh, the difference is only the the organism. <laughs> so tempe we use uh, disopus fungi, and natto we use uh, bacteria, bacillus natto. If you uh, maybe you, you can you can find it in YouTube. You can find how to make natto. It very similar with uh, making tempe. How to make tempe is very similar because uh, there should be um, there should be a particular particular uh, temperature and you you should dehaling 
you should soaking. Yeah, it's very similar with, with the, the, the process of the making process is very similar, but the uh, the most important thing that the different is the microorganism. Tempe use fungi, natto use bacteria. Okay. Is it clear now? Thank you, you're welcome. Okay, any more questions from the floor? No, no questions? <laughs> You still have a lot of time here. Okay, coming from Eka. Hello, doctor. How to cook properly and the time it takes so that the nutrients in tempeh are not lost? All right. Okay, thank you very much for the question. Um, so actually, the, uh, the nutrient of the tempeh, the nutrient, of the food source will uh, not loss after uh, cooking. So uh, in here, the um, the time, the time of, of for cooking the the soybean is only for uh, remove the skin and soften the uh beans so first first uh for soybean you should soaking soaking the the soybean after soaking uh after soaking you clean clean the clean the skin upper skin after that the cook you uh boil the so the first uh, first boiling of soybean maybe only 15 until 30, 50, 15 until 30 minutes until uh, boiling until boil and uh, after that um, uh, after, uh, we wait until uh, overnight, then and then we clean the clean the skin, the upper skin, the outer skin again for really really clean, benar-benar bersih untuk kulitnya. Itu yang tadi saya uh, saya bilang prosesnya adalah step dehaling for cleaning. Uh, the upper skin completely and then we boil again the second boiling for same 15 until 30 minutes after that uh, the I can see uh, after that the soybean will drain and cooling then it could uh, inoculate, inoculate, inoculate with the rhizopus. So, um, yeah, cook prop, there are way there are. Um, the, you can cook. You can cook with your uh, with any kind of with 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 many way. There are uh, any. Tidak ada uh, cara khusus untuk memasak karena ya memang uh, nutrien di dalam makanan nutrien di dalam uh, kedelai itu tidak tidak hilang begitu saja hanya hanya karena di uh, direbus gitu ya jadi ya ya direbus biasa aja gitu. Another question. 
from Evie Fever. Next, Doctor, why can't we put seasoning earlier on or uh, on in the early stage of tempe making supaya kita boleh create tempe uh, with uh, rasa yang pedas, for example, but just the chili powder, no need salt. Is it, uh, can we try that? Something like that. Okay, Karis Mami, so you're welcome. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Uh, pertanyaan selanjutnya. Um, we cannot, why we cannot, uh, we cannot put the seasoning earlier because uh, it will um, mengganggu, it can mengganggu proses, uh, mengganggu proses inokulumnya bertumbuh. Uh, I uh, once I uh, I have tried I have tried to put okay. I have tried to put something in the tempe, but yeah, it very uh, gagal. <laughs> Jadi. Uh, ketika saya tambahkan itu malah justru mengganggu proses um, mengganggu proses inokulasinya jadi apa, tidak 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 bisa tumbuh dengan bagus gitu sporanya seperti halnya if we made um, if we made uh, roti you cannot add uh, yeast with the salt uh, together Just, just like that because uh, maybe chili will uh, will we will apa sih mengganggu chili <laughs> okay, I say. itu akan mengganggu proses ya, inokulasinya jadi pertumbuhannya tidak akan bisa maksimal ketika ada uh, hal lain gitu apa istilahnya dia mengganggu, akan mengganggu prosesnya I have tried I have tried. Saya sudah pernah mencobanya waktu saya di Jepang dan itu justru ya justru meng, tidak tidak jadi gitu. Tempenya tidak jadi. Alright. Okay. Ya. Yeah. And then from uh, Priya Darshini. Hi doctor, can I know what is shelf life of the homemade tempe? Okay, for the shelf life, uh, in the ambient temperature, in the room temperature, you can keep it uh, in the room temperature for three days. After that, if we, it will be, yeah, in the aging process, aging process it can, uh, in the Indonesia, it call, uh, we call it tempe semangit. Di tempe semangit itu baunya uh, akan lebih menyengat macam bau amonia itu dan lebih uh, bau jamurnya agak lebih terasa kecut kecut begitu sak begitu apa ya uh, agak lebih ya terasa seperti itu you can you can keep it in the uh, room temperature for three days but you can store it the store tempe in the refrigerator Uh, maybe until five days, but you can frozen. We can freeze it in the frozen in the freezer, and uh, you can uh, consume it maybe for uh, maybe until six months. Is it clear, Ria Darshini? All right, that's good. So, any more questions? Okay, we have another question from Tai Shin Ryu. Uh, okay. So, hello, doctor. Is it successful to make tempeh without starter? Okay. I never try it because sometimes we use, uh, even we use starter, we cannot make a good tempeh. 
So how how we can make tempe without starter? <laughs> Or uh, I never tried. I never tried uh, without using starter. But if you uh, if you want to try, if you find uh, waru down waru, you can try it. Like I explained before in the presentation that USAR of uh, USAR of Tempe Inukulum is originally from uh, Don Waru. So you can, you can you can try it with Don Waru. So you use a uh, black so uh, black soy black soybeans and uh, you wrap it in the Don Waru. And leave it. Maybe it may, maybe it will it will be tempe. Maybe, but I I never try. Yes. Uh, does that answer your question? So yeah. Okay. So basically, the panja itself came from the downwater itself, right? Yeah. yeah. So if you don't need to use the, uh, if you don't use the starter, maybe you should wrap it on that uh, specific <laughs> down, <laughs> something like that. Who knows? It becomes a tempe afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah but, but we never, never try it. it. <laughs> you can try. Yeah. We should try and make it as a FYP <laughs> project. <laughs> All right, more questions from the students? Okay, uh, from Chong Jiat E. Good morning, doctor. May I know if the amount of tempeh yeast added is same for all types of beans when making the tempeh? And what is the most challenging part during the making of tempeh? Okay, thank you very much for the Uh, for the amount, you can um, uh, you can use the um, for one for uh, may uh, about it's around one kilo, one kg, one kg soybean. Uh, you can use one uh, spoon. One spoon of uh, yeast, one use of uh, one, one, one spoon of uh, one tablespoon of uh, ragi tempe. Uh, and you, it's not kira kira, but uh, sometimes, sometimes you, if sometimes if you only use a small amount. So the tempe, uh, tempe still can uh, made. Uh, tempe tetap akan jadi walaupun uh, you can, you use a small amount of ragi tempe. But uh, for uh, maybe for for one or one kg, you can use uh, one tablespoon and. Uh, for the for all types of bean the same um, for type uh, yeah uh, maybe you get you um, the standard is one one kg one tablespoon for one kg and the, the important things is uh, mix mix the mix the ragi Mix the yeast with the uh, soybean uh, evenly. Mix evenly, so the spore will uh, spread. Uh, will spread with a uh, good shape. And the most challenging part. The most challenging part is uh, the hulling. So, if the um, it is not. Uh, it is. It is not. I. You will not tired. 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 Will if you only 
uh, made maybe only one, maybe only 100 ounces, but it will be challenging if you will make tempe from uh, one kg or three kg because you should remove you should remove the skin of the uh, of the soybean completely it should remove all and uh, it's it is very uh, how to say it's very tiring it's very tiring yeah it's very tiring because uh, too much water to uh, too much water to clean and too much effort because uh, three uh, usually three three if if you use three uh, one one kg from one uh, soybean one one seed soybean it will be um, pecah jadi dua biasanya kan seperti itu uh, untuk meng, me, membersihkan kulitnya agak terlalu susah gitu. I have one story I have uh, when I'm in Japan I in Japan I have uh, I have neighbor Indonesian neighbor he want to um, he want to make tempe uh, he want he want to make tempe and uh, for for us for us that that uh, scientists we uh, step by step uh, scale up from one one kg to two kg to three kg but he he want to make uh, to make uh, directly to peak capacity he made uh, he make uh, 10 kg and many times uh, failed because yeah many times failed because uh, the dehulling process can be uh, completed because yeah too many 10 10 k 10 kg for manual de dehulling it's very uh, tiring very time consuming uh, yeah I remember that he uh, throw away maybe <laughs> maybe yeah many many kg he 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 throw he throw away because uh, because the uh, the dehulling process uh, cannot be completed cannot cannot be complete so yeah the challenging part is dehulling for the big capacity of uh, tempe making. Okay, maybe, maybe it's enough. It's clear enough. Okay. All right. Okay, another question from Is Naini. Uh, Good morning, doctor. From all types of tempe, what kind of tempe has Dr. Me? Okay. Uh, last time I'm uh, I made um, soybean. Um, terus apa lagi yang kemarin itu? Uh, green bean, mm -hmm. kacang hijau, green bean, and apa ya yang besar besar itu namanya? Uh, like uh, red bean. Red bean and um, yeah. lamtoro, lamtoro apa sih? Uh, ciper, winged bean, uh, black bean. Nah, uh, so in my uh, In my uh, with my uh, former supervisor, we have tried 
to meet uh, from uh, legum leg, leg, leguminous uh, leguminous plant. So leguminous plant like acacia, uh, apa lagi ya? Fitna signensis, uh, lupinus, but uh, for me myself, I just try uh, only limited, limited, uh, limited type. So, soybean and green bean. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Any more questions from the floor? Oh, okay. Let's see. There's more questions now. Everyone is asking questions. <laughs> okay. From Niza Abdurafi, doctor, what the best microorganism that produce the best taste among rhizopos, oligosporus, or rhizae, or stolonifer, and many others? Which one is the best? And from Norusuraya is... Hi, doctor. Is there any kind of bean can we use to make them bear, or is it a specific type of bean that can be used? Thank you very much for the question from Nizar. Uh, for the best microorganism, so until now, I only use the Rhizopus oligosporus. So I never use the other because uh, the, yeah, I only use the rhizopus oligosporus form. I never use the, the, the other rhizopus. So I, I cannot uh, give you explanation about the difference of different, uh, different taste. Is it will be different taste or not? I, I don't think so, but maybe, Maybe it will be similar, maybe. But I don't, uh, I don't have experience with the other, uh, the other microorganism. I only use my oligosporus. And the next question from Nur Suraya. Any kind bean can we use? Yes, you can, actually you can try any kind of bean. So uh, you can use any kind of bean. Uh, the specific character, uh, characteristic that can uh, be used as tempe, maybe it should be starchy. Starchy mean dia lebih, uh, apa ya, kalau, uh, seperti kedelai, kedelai kan dia lebih, apa namanya istilahnya ya starchy lebih apa namanya ya yeah. uh -uh. basically the, it's, it 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 have starch content in the uh, the, the bean so uh, yeah huh? almond yeah you can make almond but <laughs> but it's too uh, maybe expensive. too expensive. Maybe it's expensive. Healthier to maybe, but <laughs> but who knows? Maybe you could try. <laughs> yeah, any kind of bean. So, uh, like uh, my my wife, former supervisor, she already tried to make uh, uh, tempe from the leguminous plant, not from Fabaceae, but from leguminous. Uh, Leguminous is uh, tanaman perdu ya, tanaman perdu. <laughs> Leguminous itu, jadi uh, termasuk tanaman-tanaman uh, dia mencoba mem membuat hasil ada yang tidak berhasil. Jadi actually you can try to any kind of bean. Asalkan kulitnya bisa di uh, asalkan kulitnya itu bisa benar-benar uh, 
uh, bersih gitu. Dan uh, apa ya? Treatment khusus khususnya untuk tan- biji-biji biji-bijian yang uh, bijinya ketika direbus e, ketika direbus itu ada warnanya. Ada kan? Ada biji-bijian yang ketika direbus ada warnanya. Seperti uh, biji kecipir itu akan keluar warna merah. Nah, itu biasanya dia harus ada treatment khusus sebelumnya. Ditambah air panas atau ditambah soda kue. Untuk lebih uh, soften the pin. Gitu. Oke, okay, does it answer your question? Nur Suraya? All right. Maybe a few, uh, one or two more questions, perhaps, or no? <laughs> okay. All right. No more questions? Okay, I think there's no more question coming from the floor. So, uh, okay. Since there's no more question, maybe from Dr. Dina, you may uh, give a few words for the students before we end our first session. For the first uh, remarks of my presentation, maybe. So, tempe. Tempe is a traditional food that. Uh, traditional food that you can find in um, many in in any corner of Indonesia maybe you can find in Malaysia and but uh, from this uh, from my presentation you can uh, Uh, so from my presentation, you can made uh, by yourself, made with the pin uh, is around which which pin that available in in your place. So uh, you can menambah menambah nilai dari. Uh, menambah nilai dari protein yang dihasilkan dari tempe itu sendiri dari masing-masing masing-masing uh, masing-masing tempat misalnya di Malaysia di Malaysia ada uh, yang yang banyak itu ada kacang merah jadi bikinlah kayak tempe kacang merah kemudian nanti ada di uh, mungkin di di Indonesia bagian mana misalnya di Jogja adanya uh, pas tidak ada kedelai tapi adanya kacang hijau ya sudah bikinnya kacang hijau it can uh, uh, elevate the, val the value of the tempe so it can also uh, make the vari variation of tempe uh, around uh, or not only in Indonesia but also in Malaysia or in other place so Yeah, it maybe can it. This is that uh, I can give you um, the um, the knowledge about the tempe. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Dina, for a great explanation about tempe. So not just that we know about eating it but now we know how to produce it or how to make tempe for ourselves okay so we will take a break uh, for now and before that uh, for those who haven't uh, filled in the attendance form please do so it's in the chat box and as well we will start our next session at 10.15 or in Malaysian time, 
11.15, okay? So you guys can uh, get back here in the Zoom session or you just can mute or pause your Zoom for the time being. All right, so see you uh, guys again at 11.15 uh, or 10.15. All right, see you.